Hi everyone, this is just a, a very quick overview of the metabolic effect of eating elimination phase. So those of you that are um, familiar with the metabolic effect of eating, um, especially those guys that are hooked up to the body transformation program, um, we'll be aware that there is three phases of metabolic effect of eating. Um, initially we kick off with seven days, um, a minimum of seven days, no more than 14 days of detox. Um, so detox being phase one, elimination being uh, phase three. Very, very similar in a, uh, a lot of ways. Um, in the middle, sandwich in the middle, is the, the part that we should en enjoy. Um, where we get to eat a lot of food that is really effective um, in increasing metabolism and as a result burning body fat a lot quicker than your typical um, eating regime. So this is how the elimination phase varies from the detox. Um, very similar as I mentioned but just to clarify a few points. The elimination phase is the most strictest phase of the three. It's a final sort of completion of the um, program however long that might be um, we're going to have guys on a, a, a four weeks program a 12 week program we're going to have some guys following 12 weeks after 12 weeks and doing it um, year in year out which is the whole idea of met metabolic effective eating um, so wherever that might be and it may be seven days, it might be 14 days, it might be 21 days. Again, as with detox, I don't recommend anything more than 14 days. And when we start pushing towards the 21 days, great for your body, great for results. But I'll always worry that you're going to hit points um, of demotivation. Um, a lack of choice in your food is going to be a massive factor because these obviously some foods that you, 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 you can't readily um, consume. Um, so basically in, an, in a nutshell, the elimination phase, phase we must not consume, consume weight, get my words right, um, we must not consume uh, dairy products except one exception and that is uh, full fat yoghurt. Um, so that is your milks, your cheeses, um, eggs don't fall into the, the dairy category as some think. Um, so as we've been in metabolic eating where well, we've made some tough choices on whether we can have cottage cheese and mozzarella and yeah maybe is it but in moderation. Here it's strictly a no. We've, we're following this strictly to the letter um, and we're not allowing any dairy products except the full fat yoghurt. Um, going back to wheat, it's pretty straightforward but all I'll, I'll say is, is to check your products and make sure there's no extracts of wheat or, or wheat flour. Um, often, they, often they do creep in there without you realising it. Um, so the obvious thing that you, when you mention wheat everybody thinks of, of bread. So obviously that's a, a no go. Um, but it's a, avoiding um, your, sort of your pastas. Um, and some of the um, some of the products where you, you might think that it's okay, as I say, check the check the ingredients. You might find that there is some sort of um, the, um, ingredient in there that is is a form of wheat. And what in this phase, what I'd like you to do is to try to avoid wheat replacement if possible, um, because wheat replacement can still have an effect on the the liver, which is what we're trying to do, we're trying to keep the, the liver clean. The detox phase is getting rid of all those toxins um, um, so that we can start on an even keel. This is to keep that process going. So sometimes when you, you start to replace um, bread with gluten free and wheat free bread, they can still be stodgy, they can still be full of flour. So just in this phase I recommend that you accept that we're not allowed having wheat, we're not having pasta um, and stick to from your from a carbohydrate point of view and the food that you're thinking of, of filling foods we're trying to have as much protein as possible and when we do go um to the carbohydrates we're thinking more of 
your sort of your rices, your pulses, and your legumes, and your, your lentils, and things like that. Um, there's no alcohol. If anybody's thinking of hitting this phase and thinking, I'm going to have one uh, vodka and slim line, I'm going to have one pint of lager, please don't do it. Um, within the body transformation program, it's all or nothing. It's seven, seven days, 14 days, or 21 days. However long you decide, from start to finish, please don't have alcohol. I can't stress that enough. The effects that alcohol has on your liver um, are horrendous. You know, I can go into great detail at what the alcohol does. But um, basically, you are not going to burn any fat within the next three or four days. So if you're doing this for seven days and you have alcohol at day three, then in effect, you've wasted the final four days um, of this phase. Processed food, some people struggle with this, but anything that comes in a pack, anything that's got preservatives to make sure that it lives a little bit longer, um, if it's on the shelf of a, a supermarket, then the chances are that it's on that shelf for a little bit longer than, than more fresh foods should be. Um, so there's a little hint there that they're going to be putting some kind of um, additives or preservatives. When you look at label, you'll see all the E numbers and all the, the, the various chemicals that they put in to make sure with that an item like chicken, for example. You and I know that if you um, get fresh chicken, you need to eat it within a day or two. Whereas you get cooked chicken, the processed chicken, and this reformed chicken in a pack, in a pack, and it will last. I think it's some some of the some of the packs will see five to seven days. So you know there's something wrong there. Anything that's false in any way, we're going back to basics and trying to eat sort of primary foods, the foods that was available thousands and thousands of years ago to cavemen. Um, so that's the foods that are readily available, the fresh, um, that the meats. Um, is, is the form of protein so you know that you can have your chicken, your turkey, your beef and um, go for fish um, try salmon, mackerel, tuna, sole, sea bass try different things like mullet um, go for your sea, uh, your seashell uh, fish as well so try prawns, your shrimp, your oysters, scallops um, that type of thing so that's abundance in a, in a protein um, where else we should be trying to get our foods as well we should be as throughout the metabolic effect of eating and um, we should be trying to get as many vegetables as, as possible in an abundance really this is an occasion to think i'm getting rid of all the carbohydrate sides that i would normally have and i'm going to fill my plate with vegetables and um, as well as those rices and pulses and legumes and lentils which i, I mentioned earlier and um, fruit is a key one yes get your fruit in but restrict it just because of the carb carbohydrate um content um, and especially the high sugar. Think of the tropical fruits, the likes of the pineapple, the mango, and um, bananas, those type of things. Keep them post exercise. So I would limit um, the, the higher sugar content fruits. Um, one piece of fruit post workout, and then maybe there's another two pieces of fruit um, throughout the day, and that will be to the maximum. Um, so it gives you an idea of, of how we kind of. Um, we should be filling our plates and what type of food that we should be having um, the final um, restriction that you've got is caffeine which to be honest most should be doing throughout the program it's one of the easier ones for me to, to go without tea or go without coffee um, it hasn't been a problem but I know for some it will so go for your decaf during this phase what I do I go even strict and, and decide I'm not even going to have that sort of imitation of tea or coffee and where to make this thing I want actual tea and um, so I go for the duration where I just go for hot water lemon honey I go for me, me, me herbal teas me green teas me fruit teas um, and I stick to those and I drink an, an abundance um, of water I make sure that I keep so so um, hydrated throughout this elimination phase what we're trying to do as with the detox we're trying to flush the liver as frequently as often as possible to allow the, 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 the liver to work um, the key role for the, the liver, which I kind of explained in the detox phase, um, is basically to, to work as a filter to allow, to allow absorption um, of nutrients, um, including bile for the assistance of fat digestion, which is important, as well as the storage of glycogen, which we're going to need when we're working out and we're exercising. Um, 
So the key differences with the, the, the detox, which you'll notice, is with the detox you get given um, a breakfast start, which is always a smoothie. You get a lunch, which is always going to be um, a soup or a salad, and then you get an evening meal. Where this changes on a breakfast, um, yes, you can have a smoothie, but I would, I would recommend that you have a smoothie and more. Um, if you refer to the, um, the actual uh, food plan that you're given, um, then you'll find that you've got a choice of breakfasts, um, which I've um, sectioned into A and B. Um, you can ha actually have, during this phase, you can actually have breakfast A and B. Um, the same rule applies as it does through metabolic effect of eating. You always try to have protein before your breakfast. Try to get your protein content and keep your carbohydrates to a minimum if you're exercising first thing in the morning. Um, so you get your protein in and then after exercise then you get your carbohydrates in the form um, of oats. So ideally you have two poached eggs on a bed of spinach. Um, post exercise then you have your porridge with maybe it's your raspberries, your, your organic honey, your flax seeds, that type of thing. So you're getting a good start to the day, which is going to set you up. And the idea is that throughout the day, rather than having big meals, you're just adding calories as you go and you're having good calories. So you have good snacks. You try to get as, as, as much protein into your snacks as possible. So don't think a snack bean is a piece of fruit end all. Have an apple and um, maybe it's half a portion of chicken or some chicken cubes or turkey cubes or half a tin of tuna um, then you have your lunch and where I see it, this can't feel is if you go to my uh, metabolic effect of eating cookbook and you make sure that you stick to the lunch and the dinner choices then you cannot go wrong um, but you're, you are free to, to make your own choices and decide because you know what you're eliminating, you know what's allowed, what's allowed and what's not allowed within your food. So you're given that freedom to make the choices. But for the individual that's worried, stick to the cookbook. The snacks in between are so important. Um, there's things that you have to eliminate. If you go to the detox phase, everything that you can have in the detox phase as a snack, you can have within the uh, elimination phase. But as I mentioned, I just encourage that you try to have more protein content in snacks. So you're constantly getting protein every two hours um, and the main reason for that is to constantly be um, repairing muscle damage that's being caused through the workouts that we're, that you we're doing um, and re you know replenishing um, as much as possible carbohydrates is going to be the key one and everybody will ask the question what are carbohydrates as always the success to fat loss is is carbohydrate of cycling um, which is allowing your body um, an amount of carbohydrates and then reducing that, that that amount we should all be trying on a sort of maintenance phase we should all be trying to get around about 100 um, grams of carbohydrates on a daily basis so there's a lot of evidence to prove that if you go for 100 120 uh, grams of carbs one day for seven days and then you go seven days where you reduce to 50 that's where you get the results what an in what you must not do as an individual is decide to go on carb de depletion or, or, or carb free the day after day after day if you don't give yourself those spikes of sugar um, your body is going to adapt with any kind of eating it's going to adapt it's going to get used to the food that you're eating um, and it's not going to lose fat as easy this way over a seven day period we're shocking we're allowing the body to adjust and then we're shopping it again so i promise you the elimination phase is strict it can be difficult you will feel as if there isn't a great deal of, of choice and variety but remember it is a phase this is something that long-term people have adapted and followed this phase and they do it over the the, the, the course of 52 weeks and um, they can be doing it for as much as 40 and um, some even doing 50 weeks um, and it takes away the need to have a detox phase um, because they know that they're not getting the toxins into the, into the body in the first place to have to do that detox to rid them so they live like this I understand that might not be possible for everybody and some, some individuals will, will struggle with that this is where the metabolic effect of eating um, program works 
it allows individ individuals to make their own decisions it allows them to have some of the choices that they shouldn't be having on occasions it allows them to make the decision that they can have it as a treat one day and then make sure that they have good choices for the, the subsequent days so that is it in a nutshell um, I promise if you keep to this and you follow it strictly you will get great results one thing I can promise is that if you don't and you make that decision on any of those food choices the wheat, the dairy, the alcohol, the processed food or the caffeine I think I'll have that cup of coffee it, you know it, it shouldn't make a difference and maybe I will have that bowl of pasta because I feel that like I need the, the energy so as a one-off you will not get those results you may get some results but you're not going to get the results that you deserve so that's the elimination phase um, hope you've enjoyed it hopefully um, it's explained the areas that it needed to um, but as always any questions direct them to myself and as you go along in the elimination phase just keep firing the questions arrows it's rather I would rather that you ask the questions and you don't make the mistakes so that you learn for the next occasion. Thank you.